Hello, Macroed Tribe. My name is Jeremy. Just in case you have not um, met me in person, I will. You can meet me via video tonight. And our first video is just going to be kind of um, a little bit of Q and A. So questions maybe that have been posted the first couple of days, nutritionally related, that I want to um, touch on and answer. I know a lot of the questions um, so far has been more about the meal plan and prep and things of that nature. And Ashley is taking care of those questions really well. But what I wanted to kind of touch is, is from a nutritional standpoint. So. A couple questions I've, I've seen come through about, you know, will macros work for me? You know, and I want to throw up a big flag right there and say, you know, stop for a second. When we talk about macros, whether you thought about this or not, before you started this program, you were eating macros. Because all the term macronutrients means is the fuels or the food that we're eating that provides fuel. Okay, so we're talking about protein, carbs, fats, and we could put alcohol into that since it perverts calories. So we're talking about fuel being calories. So we got our macronutrients and then we have our micronutrients, which is our vitamins, our minerals, and things of that nature. Okay, so don't overthink the process. Okay, every food is either protein, carb, or fat, or somewhat combination of all two or three of them. Okay, we like to classify them as a food is a protein if it's higher in protein. A food is a carb if it's higher in carb. And a food is a fat if it's higher in fat. That's kind of how we classify them to simplify it, okay? Now, the macronutrients that I've listed for you guys is the average numbers that I've seen worked for my clients and that I've developed, you know, that works for my clients in the last decade and a half, okay? We watched it for the last year. We've had a 1,000 people this last year have success. Now, some people have a little bit more success than others because we got to kind of tweak these numbers. But if you hit the macro plan for all eight weeks, you will find a level of carbohydrate and fat as far as consumption of those two that work for you. So the first couple of weeks, the weight loss might be slow. You might not see much and you may start seeing more of a weight loss later on. That could just mean that you're carbohydrate sensitive and we could work on that for the long term plan. OK, but short term here, just take a big time out and stop. And, and stop stressing about, you know, what what's this? What's that? Can I substitute this? Can I substitute that? Even if we didn't have everything that Ashley's given you in the, the menus, what I'll tell a lot of people to get started is, hey, just document your food for the week, okay? Start tomorrow, docu document your food. Look at it and say, oh man, I was really high on carbohydrate today. I better cut back on carbohydrate tomorrow to massage my numbers to equal close to what the macro plan looks like. Day two comes around. You cut the carbs in half. You fall within the grit, the carbohydrate rim that we have set. But then you look and say, man, my protein's low. All right. So it means day three, you're going to work on getting your protein up. Okay. There would be nothing wrong with that process. Okay. What we've given you guys is the tools to kind of take a little bit of that work out of it. Okay. But let me just preface to say there is still going to be a little bit of work for you. Okay. And what I mean by that is a learning process. We're all creatures of habit. So I want you to learn the foods that you eat. Okay. Uh, I seen this post earlier, like what are the best sources of fat? Well, that answer, the best sources of fat is fat that you would consume and like. Okay. Cause I might tell you that butter is a, the best source of fat, but if you don't like to eat butter, then we're stuck. Okay. So just kind of slow down, take a few breaths and don't stress so much about it. All right. The big thing that we want you to do in this week is doing some meal planning, which I'm sure by this time at the night, most of you guys have done, you've done your meal planning. We're going to start drinking, you know, a lot more water rule of thumb on that's half your body weight in ounces. And you're going to start documenting. That's the kind of key thing for this week one, documenting, getting close to your numbers as much as possible. Okay. That we start and stop and talk about protein, carbs, and fat. Here's a spill that I generally give. Proteins. You got meats, you got eggs, you got fish, you got some cheeses or some yogurt can be a protein, um, and then protein shakes. So those are the five sources of protein that you, you can consume. So when you're looking to add more protein in your diet, it needs to be, you know, a meat or a fish, it needs to be some eggs. It needs to be maybe, like I said, some yogurts. You got to be careful with yogurts because like a Greek yogurt would be a protein, but then yogurt with Skittles on top is going to be a carb. Okay. Um, some cheeses can be a, a good source of protein, can be higher in protein. And then like I said, our, our protein shakes would be a protein also. So those are five sources of proteins. For fats, you basically have your nuts and seeds. That would also include your nut and seed butters. You have your oils. As a rule of thumb, we say cook with grass-fed butter, cook with coconut oil, flavor with olive oil. 
There's a whole lot of other oils out there that are healthy, but that's our general rule of thumb. We like to see you cut out the vegetable oils, okay? Those are very high in omega-6s, very low in omega-3s, increases inflammation. We'll talk about that later on in a video or in an education session. You have avocados, you have olives themselves, you have coconut itself. Um, let me make sure I didn't miss that. We'll, we'll start back over. Nuts and seeds, nuts and seed butters. Um, the oils that we talked about, coconut, avocado, olive, olives. That's basically it for your fat sources. And then everything else is a carbohydrate. Veggies are a carbohydrate. Fruit is a carbohydrate. Bread is a carbohydrate. Okay, it's not that carbohydrate are bad. I'll say that again. It's not that carbohydrate is bad. What we see is people overeat carbohydrate. That is the reason the macro plan is based on a lower carbohydrate approach. Okay, that term lower is a relative term. Okay, what we see is the more physical active you are, okay, so the more that you're training for a sport, the more carbohydrate you can get by with, okay? But I love that 100 to 150 range for most of us as recreational quote unquote athletes, that 150 or less works really well. You know, so, so kind of throw out that term high or low and think relative. All right, so that's kind of my little spill on protein, carbs, and fat. And I've just seen that in the blog. You know, a lot of people get a little bit just like frustrated, um, things of that nature with, with the initial process. Um, but like I said, I just, I just would say, you know, just keep it, take a deep breath, let the first few days be a learning experience and, not, and don't get too caught up in it having to be perfect. I think I posted that today. You know, you, you don't have to hit my macro numbers perfect, but you got to be close. OK, um, you don't have to follow Ashley's recipes, you know, to a T. You know, you can sub things out. You know, you don't like um, X meat, sub another meat in. It's not like that. those have to be there. And those are really just tools to help you ease into this process. All right. Um, as I look through and make sure there's anything else I want to cover. I've seen the MyFitnessPal a couple times. Um, you know, don't worry about, I think they have posted the link to how to fix MyFitnessPal as far as, you know, what works well um, as far as the macronutrients go. But you can just leave it blank. What I do is I don't even change it. I just look at my totals for the day. So I know what week I'm on. I know what I'm shooting for as far as protein, carbs, and fat. I enter it and then look where I'm at. So that's another thing that I've seen uh, come up a few times. And then last, um, supplements. I think it was the other nutrition question. Like I said, all these have been answered in the thing. I just want to kind of do a video on them tonight. Um, so on the supplements, guys, I posted a video or a picture of mine. I posted the vitamin D. I posted the magnesium, the omega-3, and the multivitamin. Those are your basic supplements. I get frustrated sometimes. You know, people come to me and say, you know, well, Jeremy, you know, what's, what's the best supplement for fat loss? That's your diet. Okay. Let me say that again. Your best supplement for weight loss and fat loss is your diet. Okay. Now, are there um, appetite suppressants? Are there quote unquote fat burners and things like that? Yes, yes, they are. And once you clear the diet up and we're talking about that last 5% help, then we can go down that road. But in the beginning, I do not recommend anything past the next five things. So we got vitamin D at 5,000 IUs a day. And then even during the winter months, we may go up to 10,000 IUs a day. So that's vitamin D, 5,000 in the uh, summer months, 10,000 in the winter. Magnesium, three to 400 milligrams at night. I like to take it with a sleep stack, around three milligrams of melatonin or some 5-HTP. I recommend the OptiCore or the Night T through my first form link as far as the, the stack goes. If you're just going to get the magnesium, you can get that over, over the counter. Um, Omega-3s, you want 2,000 milligrams to 4,000 milligrams of Omega-3s. Now, the trick here is not fish oil, but Omega-3s. A lot of people go in, they'll buy the $10 bottle that's 1,000 tablets. On the outside, it says one gram of fish oil. So you turn around, you look a little further in the label, it'll be 1,000 milligrams of fish oil with only 200 milligrams of omega-3s. That means you would literally have to take 
10 of those to be 2000 milligrams. So you're taking 10 of the tablet that's cheap when you could take a better product over here and get in one dose or one capsule or two capsules that same dosage. So my rule of thumb is look for 90% to 100% of the product is omega-3. So if it's 1000 milligrams official, then you want 900 milligrams of omega-3. I take the full omega from first form, 100% of the official is omega-3s. Last but not least, a good multivitamin. With a multivitamin, what you want to stay away from is the hard-pressed tablets. When you consume a hard-pressed tablet via a multivitamin, it's not going to absorb in the body. Your body does not have time to break it down. It basically passes through your digestive system. Google Centrum in the New York sewer if you want to take a look at what multivitamins that are hard-pressed does in your body. Okay. Last but not least on the, the supplements, um, you know, a protein shake to fix, you know, like as a meal replacement is totally fine. And then if you're into training and you're training hard, the next step after the basic supplements would be the post-workout protein, which is 100% whey protein isolate and 100% um, glucose. So that would be our post-workout stack. And, and that um, in, if we're looking at the, if you guys are checking out the first form link would be the formula one and the ignition. Um, but I always like to teach what you're looking for other than teach the names um, so that if you have you know your favorite brand that you're already consuming and and it's a hundred percent whey protein isolate then I'm, I'm fine with that so as long as you're getting a hundred percent whey protein isolate and hundred percent glucose if it's not a hundred percent of those then I want you to find one that is all right so hopefully that answers the questions uh, we're looking to run like 12 minutes guys um, I'll see you this week for Q&A and once again, I'll just kind of keep an eye on the page when new, specific nutrition questions come through. Like I said, you're going to get most, most of the ones so far come through have been specifically, um, you know, for Ashley with the meal plans and stuff and she's been knocking them out of the park. Look forward to the next eight weeks and I'm excited to see what results you guys can produce. Um, as always, if you have a specific question for me, guys, tag me in it, post it in the, um, into the page and I'll get to it ASAP. Have a great night.